Hey guys, it's Mike. In this video, we're going to discuss ways to build word level searches using the syntax search capabilities of Logos Bible software. We're going to look at two specific examples for illustration for why you may want to use this method when running a search. Just as in Hebrew searching, when people think about searching original Greek, they typically think about doing word-level morphological searching. In other words, we are looking for lexical and inflected forms of different Greek roots and lemmas. Sometimes, we will search for more than one Greek word by attaching a search operator between them. However, there are other times when a simple morphological search is just not powerful enough to accomplish what we are looking to do. We can use syntax searching in a very similar manner to a morphological search with some additional functionality. With Greek syntax searching, there are a few more options than in Hebrew. We are going to look at one of these syntax databases today. The databases that I would recommend using are either the opentext.org database or the Cascadia database. For today, we're going to look at the Cascadia for our example, since word-based searches are almost identical for both Cascadia and open text. Let's begin by opening our preferred Bible to John 1.16. For this video, I'm going to be using the ESV. This verse is often misunderstood due to a strange phrase that is not easily translated into English. The verse reads, For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. What does the author mean when he says grace upon grace? One way to help in interpreting this phrase is to find other phrases in the Greek New Testament that have a similar word order and structure. Let's take a look at the structure of this phrase by opening up one of our Greek phrase marker analyses. Go to the command bar and type Cascadia. In the drop down menu, select the option that says Cascadia Syntax Graphs of the New Testament SBL Edition. It should open to John 1.16, but if it doesn't, go ahead and turn it there. If you've not watched part 3 of this syntax searching series, the way that we read this graph at the word level is from top to bottom. The chart also moves from left to right or right to left. As you move to the left, you see additional levels of syntactical relationship between words, phrases, and clauses. If we look at the far right hand side, we see the Greek word karen, followed by the preposition anti, then the Greek word karitas. The words on either side of the preposition share the same lemma. In this case, it's the Greek lemma charis. To find other phrases that have a similar structure to this, we'll want to run a syntax search with word agreement where the lemma is the part that agrees. We will also limit this to only places where the preposition that divides them is the word anti. Open a new syntax search window by going to the Documents menu. On the left hand side, select Syntax Search. In the new window that appears, change the range to Cascadia Syntax Graphs of the New Testament SBL Edition. Let's dock this floating window by right clicking on the Syntax Search Panel tab. In the menu, Click Dock This Tab. Position the Dock tab so that it covers your English Bible in the same tile. We now have our syntax graph on one side and our syntax search on the other. Since we are doing a word level search, we are going to match the syntax graph from the top down. In our graph, there are three words that comprise this structure. To search for this, we will want three separate word nodes in our search. Click on Add Search Terms Here in the syntax search. In the menu, click on Word. Hover over the Word node and click on the blue icon at the bottom of the node. In the menu that appears, select Word again. Do this one more time so that there are three word level nodes visible stacked on top of each other. Click on the first Word node. On the right hand side is a pane that allows us to edit the contents of each node. If we mouse over the first instance of the lemma charis in the syntax graph, we see that this is a noun. Go back to the syntax search and expand the section that says morphology. In the box, type the at symbol and click on noun. 
Then click the blue arrow in the menu to lock this morphology term. Notice that the node now shows the category noun in its box. We are going to not only search for instances of Keras, but also any other noun that appears in this first node, so we're going to leave the lemma information blank. Click on the second node and expand the section text and lemma. In the lemma box, type g colon, followed by the transliteration for the preposition anti. Select the option anti for in the drop down menu and hit enter. This has now placed this lemma in the node. Click on the third node, then expand the morphology section. Type the at symbol and click on noun, then the blue arrow to lock this morph term in for this node. Also expand the section agreement. One of the great things that syntax searching allows for us to do is to find agreement between different search terms. In this instance, we want to click add rule, then click where it says instance and select lemma instead. Make sure that the rest says agrees with word one. This will now find every instance where the first and third words are nouns and the two nouns have the same lemma. Last but not least, name the search. Let's name this one Cascadia, Grace upon Grace. Now run the search. In the search results panel, we can also add an English version to help us decipher our results. Click on Add Version in the top left hand corner and type ESV. Select the ESV from the list and hit Enter. Notice the different search results. In each of the other hits, there is the description of the giving of one thing as a response to another thing of a like variety or kind. In Matthew 5.38, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. 1 Peter 3.9 says, reviling for reviling. How does this affect our interpretation of John 1.16? Perhaps this phrase should be interpreted in a similar manner as that of Matthew 5.38 and 1 Peter 3.9, that is, one thing as a response for another of the same kind. In Matthew and 1 Peter, the point is not to respond with one for another. In John 1.16, it is encouraged. One grace is provided in response to another. If one grace is from that of Jesus Christ, what is the other grace that this is a response to? If we read verse 17, we get the answer for this. Here we have two explicitly listed. One is the law given through Moses, and the other is the grace through Jesus Christ. We were given a grace through the law of Moses, and in light of this, or in response to this, God gave us an even greater grace through Jesus Christ. Let's look at one more example. Turn your English Bible and the syntax graph to Romans 1.17. Here we read, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. What is meant by the phrase from faith for faith? Notice in the syntax graph that we have four words in the Greek that make up this construct. There is a preposition, followed by a noun, followed by another preposition, which is then followed by yet another noun. We can find other constructs of these same parts of speech in this order. If we were to build this word level syntax query, it would look like this. There are four nodes that each represent one of the parts of speech. If we want to reflect even further the construct found in Romans 1.16, we can also set a word agreement of the lemma in words 2 and 4. If we run this search, we'll find other constructs of a similar nature. I hope that this video has been helpful in showing how you can use the syntax search in Logos to find different Greek constructs at the word level. Obviously, there are many more types of searches that we can run using word level searching in Greek, but hopefully this was enough to get you started in running some of your own. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. If you want to know when the next video from this series is released or any other new content, subscribe to the channel by clicking here. As always, enjoy mining the depths of the scriptures using Logos. Until next time.